Today on Yes Your Kitchen is all about home entertaining. We are going to impress your guests by making a fabulous Asian dish right on the table from a very long time ago. You're going to love it. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Jill and this is Yester Kitchen. If you're new here, welcome. It would be an honor to have you join us as we explore retro history through food. Okay, are you ready? We are gonna make one fabulous dish. So in the 70s, it was very, very, very popular to impress your guests by making table side meals. So that's kind of where the cheese fondue came from. That's where the cherries jubilee came from. And also in the 70s, it was very popular to make oriental food at home. And I say oriental and not Asian because that's what we called it back then. Now, Orient, all of Asia, those beautiful countries, the beautiful people, they were all known as the Orient, which is why we called it the oriental food. It's changed to Asia and Asian, and that's where we are now. But we are gonna go back to a time where it was oriental. Like, remember that movie, The Orient Express? It's like that. So we are gonna make sukiyaki because it was huge in America in the 70s, although it really truly is a Japanese dish. So what is sukiyaki? Well, it is a one pot wonder that's literally made table side and then everyone just serves themselves right from the pot. So sukiyaki means, suki meaning spade, you know, like a shovel, and yaki meaning grilled. So what it is, is it's, it's very, very thinly sliced meat, usually beef with all kinds of vegetables and a fabulous sauce. And it's, it's to die for, you, you really wanna try this. So this came originally from the Edo period in Japan, which was 1603 to 1867. And back then, farmers you know, were out and they were planting their fields and they were working their crops. They didn't have time to go home and make lunch. So what they would do is they would bring fish and tofu into the fields with them. And then of course they had all their vegetables and at lunchtime they would take their spade or their suki and they would cook everything on a fire on their spade and that's how they would have lunch. So more and more people started doing it and that absolutely grew. Now during the Edo period or Edo, depending on how you say it, it was um, a very, very Buddhist time and cows were considered a working animal and they didn't eat beef except for two occasions. One, if you were really sick, like they did feed beef to the sick soldiers. You know, it is a protein and it does help the body. And the second was a year end drinking party called Boninkai. And that was for family, friends, coworkers, and everyone drank to celebrate the end of the year. I mean, drank. So of course, if you're gonna drink a lot, you need some substance. And for those parties, beef was allowed. So in the 1860s, Japan opened their ports to foreign merchants. They came in with their beef and their eggs and their milk and their cooking techniques. And the Japanese people were really taking notice and thought, oh wow, this is really good. And fell in love with beef. So the whole no beef started going away as the Edo period ended. And sukiyaki was a perfect, perfect vehicle for beef because it already had the vegetables in the sauce. And shortly after that, sukiyaki restaurants started opening up. So of course, as Japanese people traveled throughout the world, they brought their recipes for sukiyaki and it absolutely landed here. And in the 70s, it was so popular because it was perfect. People were cooking Oriental at home and people like to impress their guests and this fit the bill perfectly. So this dish, comes from one of my personal cookbooks from when I was a kid. Do you remember the Sunset Cookbooks? I know you, how many do you have? They made so many. So this is from 1975, and this is the Oriental Cookbook. And of course we call it Asian cooking now, but back then it was the Orient. It was very romantic, very beautiful. It was just the Orient. So everybody wanted to emulate the food, which is why Asian cooking was so popular at home during the 70s. So we're gonna make something called East West Sukiyaki. And the reason for that is because the book gives you a Japanese recipe and an American version. I highly recommend the Japanese because you really want to taste it. I'll give you the American options. I'll be doing the Asian dish. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make your broth. So I have here three quarters cup of dashi. What is dashi? Dashi is literally the foundation for most of Japanese cooking. It's the foundation for soups, sauces, stews, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing today. So it is a combination of seaweed, actually kombu seaweed, and something called bonito. 
which are these guys right here. When I'm not cooking on camera, I cook a lot of Asian. I love it, so I always have mine on hand. It's a skipjack tuna, and that is the basis of dashi. It almost has a smoky quality, so dashi has like a smoky, umami, kind of light sea, seafood kind of thing going on, but I know you, and I don't think you're gonna make your dashi. So we're gonna use instant dashi, you're welcome. It's, it's fabulous. There is no, no harm whatsoever in using instant dashi. And that way you boil water, you add some of the powder, you have dashi. But if you wanna really make real dashi, I'll put the directions down below. It's actually quite easy. But you know Yester Kitchen, we love easy. So we are gonna use this. So here we have three quarters of a cup of our dashi. And to that, we're gonna add two tablespoons of sugar, a half a cup of soy sauce, and of course, to make it perfectly delicious and magical, we're gonna add a quarter cup of sake. Any sake will do. Just your basic, get in the liquor store, bottle of sake. All we're gonna do is mix this up. And this is the foundation for our stew. So once you have this, you're gonna wind up with a little under two cups, and this is perfect. You're, just this alone is delicious. So when you cook Asian, you really want to have everything ready to go because it is a lot of prep, which is called mise en place, which means setting up in French. And that just means prepping all your ingredients because then you can have them at your table and you just start putting things together. I have one very big saucepan, not saucepan, frying pan. I love this, this is gonna work perfectly. Now all you're gonna do is you're gonna pretend you're at your table and you're just gonna add things in a certain order. Everything stays in the pot and as you cook something, you're gonna push it to the side and cook something else and push it to the side. So you're not gonna have everything all mixed together. By the time we're done, we're gonna have individual areas of different ingredients. We'll be fine. So the first thing I have is about a tablespoon of shortening. The original recipe calls for beef suet. And if you do have it, it's about a one or a two inch cube. But I know most of you don't, I don't. So we're gonna use shortening because it just burns very, very close to beef suet. Can you use vegetable oil? You can, but if you can find shortening, go ahead and do it. And we're gonna just start melting that right there. But yeah, if you, maybe about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. So now our shortening is melted. We are gonna add our beef. You want a tender steak. You don't want something you need to barbecue for a long time. You can use filet, ribeye. This happens to be a New York strip. And you wanna slice it very thin, just like what I did here. So here is our beef, and as you can see, it is very, very thinly sliced. And you wanna definitely cut off the big chunks of fat. If you have some marbling in there, you're totally fine. And then we're just gonna start, just pretend the company is all here, because this is so 70s. The housewife would stand up at the table and cook, and all the guests would be ooing and eyeing. So you wanna just cook this until it's just a little pink left. So give me a second and we'll do that. So our meat's cooking. And as you can see, it's coming along just fine. Now it is gonna continue to cook. This is a pound. What I'm making here is gonna serve two to three people easily doubled. So we got our meat and we're gonna push that to one side. Next, I have one onion. I cut it in half and then I sliced it very thin from there. And you wind up with these guys and into the pan it goes along with about six to eight green onions. And I cut those about an inch and a half. And you definitely wanna use the green parts as well as the white parts, not all the way to the top. Imagine, you know, you give all your guests some sake, they're all drinking sake and maybe eating some shrimp toast, we made that. And by the way, tongs are your best friends when making this. So you wanna just take your onions and just kinda of keep turning them and you want them to keep going until they start to brown. So as you can see, glasses of sake and appetizers for your guests while they're watching you make dinner is the perfect thing. And yes, I have made this for company. And yes, they love it. There's only so much room in your pan. So what you do if you have, you're doubling this is you only make half the ingredients, you cook it, you let everybody serve themselves. And while they're eating the first round, you start making the second round. And that's how everything works in the pan because I don't think any of us have a pan this big. 
Okay, so it's been about five, seven minutes. Take a look. As you can see, our onions are now all wilted and browning, browning, and not browned, just getting started. It's been about five, seven minutes. And it would be super nice if you're doing this dinner party, and I really hope you do. It's fun and it's delicious. Then the hostess, the one that's cooking, someone has to keep filling her glass while she's cooking. And see, it's just like a whole big party. Okay, next thing we're gonna add is mushrooms. I have here about six, eight ounces of sliced mushrooms. I actually happen to love shiitakes. So that's what I used. You can, and you can use whatever you like. And next, I have Chinese cabbage. It's also known as Napa cabbage. Sometimes markets say bok choy is Chinese cabbage. Don't use that. This is exactly what you want. You want a half a head of Chinese cabbage and then you want it shredded, well, very, very sliced, very fine. And you, that goes in another section of your pan. And we are not done yet, but it's okay because all these vegetables have very, very high water content. So as they cook, they get smaller, they make room. Just letting our mushrooms and our cabbage go and you're just gonna sneak in here and just quickly give your beef just a little turn, just so the bottom gets to the top. Okay, now, Remember that broth we made? By the way, there is an American version with beef broth. It's not as good, but it's absolutely acceptable. That will be done in the description as well. You wanna pour about half of this in. Just like, ah. Uh. And now everything got really quiet in here. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna play the simmer game again, and we're gonna let the cabbage and the mushrooms simmer for about five minutes. Just turn them every so often, and I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. Take a look. As you can see, all of our cabbage and our mushrooms are now releasing all their water and cooking way down and making more room because we have more things to add. But in the meantime, by the way, this is on a high heat. I forgot to tell you that. Rotate, not stir, your other piles so they have a chance to cook in that glorious, glorious dashi base broth. Okay. Sukiyaki, you gotta try it. It's so good, it's so much fun. Now, I have tofu, I have four ounces, which is a half of a normal size container. And I made really, not tiny cubes, but bites, about an inch cubes. I have medium firm tofu. You can use whatever firmness or softness you like. You don't want the water, you just want the tofu. So in goes the tofu. And I have rice noodles. I've already, they come dried. I've soaked them in a cold water for an hour. So it kind of rehydrates them. You can use rice noodles or you can use cellophane noodles, which are made out of mung bean. You can find them both in your market. Whoops, there goes some noodles. You can find them both in your market or online. So in go your noodles. And those are gonna go right next to your tofu. You don't have to add them all. Just add whatever you kind of feel looks right. And I kind of feel like that looks right. So now what are we gonna do? We're gonna let it cook for another few minutes. Okay, now we're just gonna kind of stir around our noodles. By the way, our 1975 cookbook suggests that if you don't have mung bean noodles or cellophane noodles or rice noodles to use spaghetti. I wouldn't. It'll just get mush. But you know what? We have so much more availability of ingredients today than we did back then. It, there's a, just not as exotic as they used to be. So I highly recommend you use that. And they also suggested if you don't have tofu to make an egg omelet and put that in there. I'd go tofu. Go authentic, as authentic as you can get. Okay, last but not least, we have fresh spinach. I have here about eight ounces. It's, it's a lot of spinach. Now spinach is also very, very high in water, so it will cook down. And now we're gonna let that sit for just a couple minutes. Okay, it is sukiyaki time. So, as you can see, we've managed to keep everything separate, which is exactly what you want. And as you cook, you know, you just wanna keep turning each different ingredient individually in the pan. And that way, the guests can serve themselves and have what they want. This, my friends, is sukiyaki. It is fabulous. Now what to do with the rest? If you're gonna make a second batch, you've got more. Or you can add if you want, 
or you can warm it up and serve it on the side to your guests, although this is not the sukiyaki sauce. The sukiyaki sauce is one raw egg. Seriously, everybody gets a cup with an egg. You wanna beat it up and you wanna beat it up really well. This is your traditional sukiyaki sauce. So here is how we eat sukiyaki. Served in bowls. Okay, so you take a little meat, a little of everything, and your guests do this. See, now you turn it over to your guests because you are happily lubricated after being served so many drinks <laughs> and cooking all this dinner. We have our sukiyaki. We have our beaten egg, and of course we serve it with rice. This happens to be jasmine rice. So, this is sukiyaki. And then while everybody's eating this, you can make the whole thing all over again. It's really like a fondue dinner. It's long, you talk, you laugh, you drink, you eat. It's such a fun dinner to the 70s. Once again, knew what they were talking about. You don't have to use an egg. You can leave it out. It's totally optional. And if you're worried, you can get pasteurized eggs. These are very, very fresh organic eggs and I'm totally fine with it. So you just take a little meat or vegetables or whatever and you just lightly dip it in the egg and it just makes the sauce a little bit richer. And it's so, so good. Have a sukiyaki night. Celebrate oriental cooking from the 70s and the big, big, all the rage cooking that it was. It's just really a fun, fun dish. I hope you give it a try. And if you do, tell me about it. You know I wanna hear it. <laughs> if you would like to explore more dishes from your childhood or just the past, I invite you to subscribe. I release new videos every week. In the meantime, there's some more retro dishes for you. And remember, every dish, even sukiyaki, the home cooking oriental phase of the 70s, ah, oh, has a story. I'll see you in the next video.